when that stadium opens in August. I am very, very disappointed where we are, but I mean, we can't affect what's happened. That's gone, that's history. I can affect what's coming on there. If I'm down, and I think it's harder to affect the players. It's a nightmare. I don't just. It's. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel real. I felt. I felt nauseated sick all all day. I've seen them relegate maybe four or five times. I might be wrong about that, but this is the worst. It's because it's that bigger game now, isn't it? Sky Sky's much over that, and you're playing for big prizes, aren't you? You know. It's just deja vu. We've all been here before, and you know how long do we have to put up with it for? With only one more game to play, Sunderland were fourth from bottom in the Premier League. As the players arrived for their last training session, they knew that if they could win their final match away to Wimbledon, they would be sure to escape the indignity of relegation. You have to stand up and be counted. That's the, that's the big thing now. But the atmosphere is quite good. It's not tense. Uh, training's quite good. I think that's, that's a telltale sign if everybody was... Um, at one another's throats and kicking each other and blaming each other for things, then we'd have a problem. Ten yards, John Owen, this boy. <whistles> Here you come now, let's go. Good stretching for your balls. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> you had to say yes then, didn't you? No one likes to be called or and, and a failure and get relegated, but I won't let it get me down or injure me health, I'll be extremely disappointed because I, I love winning. But you know that from being with us, but I'm not I'm not gonna like commit suicide or, you know, go in deep depression. Cause it ain't worth it. But but it does effectively the book stop with you though. Yeah. I mean, I mean want, hey, hey, let's you have to accept listen, if, if it happens. It's my fault. Oh of course. It's of course. Of course, but there's always there's always gotta be winners and losers and the winners of this hey I, I was top man last year. You know, pats on the back and I hey, I loved it. Great. So I've got to accept what comes with if we go down, but I think we'll stay up and positive about it. How have the results gone this week? I haven't heard them. Obviously. Not so good. We never went nowhere. But hopefully if we uh, win the match and everything will be all right, I think so much, some of them will drop points, hopefully. We're in. Frustrating now, though, isn't it, when it's down to what other people do oh, rather than... Well, yeah. I don't know. Well, I suppose it's got to be, but I suppose if we win and we're still in the fourth place, we might, you know... I've never really worked it out. I cannot be honest. <laughs> I'm just hoping that we're going to win and that'll be it. The local paper said last night that uh, we've had 104 Premier League games since 1984 and we've never won two in a row. Things change, though. Records are there to be broken. Even if they were to draw, Sunderland would still stay up, and so 13,000 fans made the 250-mile journey to cheer on the team for the last time. Subs today. Woodsy. Alex, Alan Johnson, Craig, Russell, Mickey Bridges. Come on, come on, the right fucking go, eh? Come on! Positive from the fucking off, eh? Been bright and bubbly the last few days, let's keep it out on air today, eh? 
Whatever happens, we fucking stick together out there. Hey, fucking get each other out of shit if we have to. Fucking look after each other like we have done for two fucking years. Hey, listen. All season, top class. Hey, we all know how big the game is. We'll go out and play your game. I think it's going to be a second bowler because of the conditions. But all I'd say is that when balls back, bounce and drop, be aware of the back. Because you just do them, so concentrate all the time. Win second balls, dead balls are going to be important. If we're alive, defending, let's do it right. And I'm sure we'll score an attack. Hey, go out and play. All the best. All the best. Boys, 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 boys. Boys. Fucking get into them. Come on, let's make sure in the fucking Premier League, eh? Although they lost, Sunderland still had one last chance. Coventry, another potential relegation team, were beating Spurs 2-1. But if that match ended in a draw, Coventry would go down and Sunderland would stay up. However, that match still had 15 agonising minutes left to play. Leeds 1, Middlesbrough 1. Not enough for Middlesbrough. They are relegated, along with Nottingham Forest. Wimbledon beats Sunderland 1-0, so Sunderland at the moment are waiting desperately to know exactly if that means that they too will be relegated and it all depends on this result here should Tottenham get an equaliser Sunderland stay up if it stays as it is Coventry yet again have survived by the skin of their teeth on the last day of the season there was nothing left to do but pray seconds Spurs can get an equaliser that would keep Sunderland up but it's a corner which Fox will now take drives it across everyone rises and Grisovic again makes a marvellous save from the header and there goes the whistle Coventry would you believe it the great survivors have done it again the great survivors have done it again Coventry City stay up Sunderland are
Well, Peter Reid, it uh, must be one of the most disappointing moments of your career, really. Well, not, not one of the best days, but um, it's, it's over the 38 games, and the points show you that we haven't been good enough. Um, obviously, extremely disappointed for the supporters, they were, they were top class. But I've got a lot of lads who've got uh, real disappointed in there. But that's football. We need to uh, get ourselves up and go for the next year. I know it's a bad time to ask this question, but what, what does this mean now to Sunderland, Peter? Going into a new stadium, obviously, but unfortunately in the lower division. Well, it's, I mean, it feels like the end of the world, but I don't think it is. You've just got to get yourselves up. and we, It's, it's going to be a hard lead in the first division nationwide next year. I'm disappointed as being in it, but you've, we've got to get on with it. That's, that's football. And Peter Reid prepared to take on the challenge? Well, if they'll have me, I'll stay here. Thanks very much, Peter. Thank you. Well, I thought we'd run a win. I did think, honestly, I did think we'd run a win. We were relying too much on other, other teams, like Coventry and Middlesbrough, to, uh, to lose and like stay up by default, really. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we didn't deserve to stay up. You just think of all the games that you should have won, and you, you do get angry. And, of course, the humiliation comes when you have to face everybody the next day. I mean, me and my dad and the house both Sunderland supporters, we didn't have anyone to face. But the next day when you go to school, go to, back to school, you've got to face everyone. So that's when the humiliation starts. It really is a cruel game. But it's not what other people do, it's what you do yourself, and uh, that's it. But it's very disappointing, I feel so sorry for all the fans, you know. It's, uh, it's very sad. And it's easy to say, well, it, it, it's only a game of football, <laughs> or it's only a game, but uh, as, as you well know, it's, it's, it, there's nothing like it. It's, it will affect people. You know, imagine the whole of the city this morning will be, you know, everywhere, all the factories, workplaces, everybody will be, will be down. There's no question about that. We're angry at the minute, we're all angry. And devastated for the club, going in a new stadium, I think it's a disaster. It shouldn't have been, I mean, we'll way up the league, I just don't know what went wrong. I mean, I was here and on Saturday and the lads were training here and, you know, the, you said, hey, these fellas are not going to get beat. The way they were training, they were, they were happy as sand boys, and they were into it, and they were, you know, you wouldn't think that a game the next year. They were tremendous. They even went and played in tennis, couldn't he, after it. And I mean, he's, he's got a bad knee, he's still injured, but he, he, they were that king, you know, you couldn't get them off the pitch. It's, uh, I, I, I just can't understand it, really, I just don't know. It's not a matter of it all going wrong. I think we all knew at the beginning of the season. Peter Reid had come in, he'd done a good job, saving us from relegation to the second division. And then in the following season, he, he's utilised the players that he's had into a workmanlike team, that work for each other, team spirit. But when you're playing in the Premiership, that's why it's called the Premiership, because it's the elite. It's not workmanship players. I think Peter Reid's got a lot to answer for, and I think Sunderland Football Club, the way they've handled this season, has been an absolute disgrace. I've, I've gone with two years and my contract left, and... Um... I'd like to see him through. Uh, I feel comfortable with the football club, but I know we've got to try and get back into the big league, and it, it, it'll be a real important one for us next year. But uh, I'm quite happy here. Obviously, I'm, I'm ever so disappointed and sick for the supporters who were magnificent. I mean, Saturday they were frightening. Uh, Sunday, sorry. But um, like I said before, it's happened, and we just got to get on with it. But ultimately, it is down to me. It hurts. It's the third time it's happened to me. It was a hat trick I didn't want, and it was horrible. On the way home from the game, I remember sitting at the back of the bus. You know, the lads absolutely devastated, like. But then I remember sitting at the back and slowly but surely getting absolutely drunk as a skunk because that was the only way at the time I thought oh, I've got to try and obliterate it out of your mind, my mind. And I think I was chucking up in the toilet at the end. I said, I ain't rang Larry to apologise yet, like, you know. And Gordon said to Scotty, oh, you better take him home when we got here. And Scotty, and I remember, Scotty sorted this out brilliantly, got us home, got indoors, and I sat on the kitchen floor sitting with my wife, and I was just sat on the floor going, what did it have to happen again like that? After 99 years, this was not how anyone wanted to leave Rocker Park.
As Sunderland's league position had fallen, so had their share price. It was now less than half of what it had been at the beginning of the year, and so the board was summoned to the City of London to face their investors. If you get relegated, you, you know you've got a lot of issues to face up. I mean, it, it wasn't something they were looking forward to. We went rubbing our hands up. had gone to London for two days. Meeting people that had made a financial loss and had invested in you, believed in you, in other words, and uh, we haven't done it for them. I feel really terrible. The point that's often missed is, under our sad circumstances, there's been nobody jumping ship. None of our players, uh, our, our wanted players, have left the club. So we've got last year's Premiership squad, plus four and hopefully six players to add to that. So we hope for a very good season on the field. We'll take any questions, please. Are you concerned about the force of your share price um, since the rotation? It's been disappointing that, it, um, that the share price has, has gone down, but having said that, relegation was bound to have an impact. You know, the, the, earnings, uh, the earning potential as a first division club is not as great. Um, it was expected, we would hope, that as this season progresses and we, are shown that we show that our longer term strategy is correct, that uh, the share price will, will, will react accordingly. I seem to recall at the time of flotation you saying that um, not only had you factored in relegation, but if there was relegation, the bottom line, if anything, would benefit rather than be adversely affected. I don't think we've ever said that. I, th I seem to recall that. All I can say is I'd have to disagree with you because I don't think we've ever given any indication. We said that certain aspects of our income line would not be um, uh, severely affected by relegation. Um, and we still believe that's the case. It's not a disaster scenario, but we need to get in the Premier League and never get relegated again. And to win things and to be in Europe. That's where our business needs to go. If you look at what, what the last few months has meant to us, is a lot of lost sleep, a lot of frustration. We're not pointing our finger at anybody, I mean. I couldn't say that the players have let us down or the managers let us down, but we, we feel that we've done everything that was necessary. And so in terms of in terms of you personally, how much of how much of a financial loss is that in well, terms of your shares? Paper loss is ten million pounds. That's the paper loss. Well it's also pride as well. I think it's pride more than anything. I mean all we needed to do was stay up. In previous seasons, 40 points would have been enough to keep a team in the Premier League. However, Sunderland fans were more concerned with the fact that this season's top scorer could only boast four goals. With Peter away on holiday, it was left to the board to face the supporters' inquisition. I wanted to get the club's view about what are the other good, strong points, if any, out of the 96 season, and what are the, the bad points, which are fairly obvious. What's the club think of this season? Well, for a start, we, we don't exactly feel happy this week. This has been one of the worst weeks of my life. Uh, Bob and I have been down to the city for the last two days. Um, and it's, it hasn't been easy trying to motivate people when deep down, you, you know, as a true supporter, you feel like shit, and that's the top and bottom of it. You know, we've tried desperately to get players in <clears throat> right from day one. Um, is it worth mentioning names, Bob? Well, it's no, it's no loss in it, so I mean, we tried, we tried from early part of the season to try and get scores out of Manchester United, time and time again. Just they would not budge. We were 24 hours away from signing Lee Clark from Newcastle. Uh, if Kevin Keegan had uh, departed <laughs> as he'd done uh, or as he did, we would probably got him in. Um, so you know, we made an offer for for Paul Gascoigne. We also uh, asked about uh, Andy Cole. What the fans are disputing is, he's saying the people who I wanted weren't available. <clears throat> the fans would love to know who the people... I mean, you've just sat no, and told us. But Pete's got a relationship with yeah. all the managers. You know, like, he's got a relationship with Alex Ferguson. He won't go out and unsettle his players. Or next time, he won't speak to him on the phone. 
what has been running a current that's been running throughout the season, as you'll note from the the letters in the local papers, as to our wage level, as to whether that's a guiding factor. Well, couldn't we prepare to pay a gas going twenty eight grand a week? Four and a so quarter, was, four and a quarter million. Categorically state that that has not thousand. been an issue. No. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, as an individual, it's yeah. down to the manager. Well, we'll keep, we'll keep going to find a reason that yeah. they can live with, won't we? Yeah. <clears throat> and unfortunately, this hasn't come across to the supporters, accepting these, these facts, these top players in the, in the yeah. frame. The supporters feel like we've took a view that the club's been OK, we'll just get by, we not, don't need to do anything else, we'll coast in and then it'll be OK next season. That's how it feels. Mm. And it um, feels like we've concentrated on getting the ground right, getting the infrastructure right, which is, that launches you forward. But we've, we, we've missed something. We bought the shirts, we bought the bricks, we've shouted as loud as we can, and we need something to hang on to. We just feel that we, here, we've done everything. We've delivered, delivered, and delivered, and we've got an, an enormous sense of loss this week. Enormous. I, I want to know how Coventry survived for 29 years, and they've got different managers, different chairmen, different players. They've survived 29 years. This club has not finished in the top half of the first division for 42 years. Well, that's right. right and that pisses me off. And I've had enough. I tell you, we've had a bad week. A bad week. It'd have to go a cap and hand at the city, which, yeah. which well, the supporters well, don't have to yes, do. Sir. Don't forget, we don't get paid neither. Mm. Well, we don't get paid for, for following no, them for a while, no. you know, and we've spent no. a lot of money travelling about. I mean, when you get 42 year old, 45 year old people on a train travelling back from London and they're in tears. Well, Every one of them, destroyed. you know, and that's that, that's how we, we feel. And I'm not I'm not disputing the fact. I mean, I know you do. I know that. I've, I've known you long enough. I know how you feel about the club, but it, it doesn't make it any easier whatsoever. We've done the same. 1991, we went up. We spent no money or very little money. We were relegated. We were told the lessons are being learned. It wouldn't happen again. Perhaps there were circumstances then for 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 the reasons that happened, but not this time that the board give the manager his full back and that the manager had millions to spend. And then we find ourselves now, 12th, 12th of May, relegated to Division One. We're a brand new stadium that's going to be the biggest white elephant in the country. Already thousands of disillusioned fans had cancelled their £25 deposit for a season ticket. And the club's new campaign slogan was beginning to seem a little optimistic. Although it was far from finished, in a desperate attempt to woo supporters, the club offered a guided tour of the stadium every weekend throughout June and July. Feel free to ask any questions you like. No one could quite believe that this was now a first division ground. A 42,000-seater stadium in a league where clubs were lucky to get crowds of half that size. Only a few months earlier, Bob Murray had dreamed of selling out on season tickets alone, just like at Man United or Middlesbrough. But now that wasn't to be. The energy came through, it's properly referred to as a vomitry. They go, a vomitry, if you want to impress your family and friends. Any questions so far? Oh, good. <laughs> I don't think I know the answers, do you? Incidentally, it's from the Latin vomitoria, which was an entrance to a Roman amphitheatre. Relegation had also meant that no big companies wanted to give the name to the stadium. This meant that the club lost out on millions of pounds worth of sponsorship money. This will be the best ground in the country when it opens. It won't be the biggest, but it'll be the best. Which is actually dead clever. But it's under soil heating in place. Works thermostatically. But the really clever bit is that it's computerized and it can actually ring the groundsman at home. It's hard lines on the poor groundsman, of course, but when we're in Europe and this is full, wig in, wig out. There'll be a small price to pay. Not too distant future at all. No problem in that camp. Any questions yet? Their first match was to be an extravaganza against the Dutch team Ajax. 
but the day before the game, the stadium was looking far from spectacular. The last couple of days, they've been obviously I've had a checklist, and as things have been done, they've been knocking their various things off. And there's a meeting, uh, I think it's early afternoon, uh, where they'll, they'll hopefully uh, sign everything off and uh, everything's, everything's go for tomorrow night. So it's exciting. It's amazing. I mean, we always knew it would go to the wire, but uh, it's. Uh... Before the game could go ahead, the club still needed a safety certificate from Sunderland City Council. David, how are you doing? How are we doing, mate? I don't know, you tell me. Did you speak to the man from the environment low? Yes, he's coming in about 11 o'clock. I mean, is there any problem with that? Uh, no, no, not much of On the environmental health department, so we're just checking out numbers of toilets. I mean, we've seen the plans for a long time. we we'll just generally ha have a look at the condition of them, make sure there's nothing particularly hazardous. With the kiosks, I've got a colleague coming, but we're having a look into those at the moment, uh, see if the power's on, which it isn't. So we can't see you know, where the lighting's rigged up or whether it isn't rigged up. Um, hot and cold water, obviously, where there's food concern. Um, it's got to be right. Finishing building the stadium was not the only problem. The match was a sellout, but there was chaos over at the new ticket office. I said I would receive them by um, Tuesday at the latest, and I'm still waiting for them. So I'm, I'm obviously just come down to see if I can get the tickets. I've paid for three tickets, and uh, hopefully I can get them. I mean, obviously, it's, it looks like it's gross incompetence on the club's behalf, and they've underestimated the job, that's right. There's absolutely no way that I can refill those tickets for you because they've, they've now been generically sold. I can offer you a Premier Concourse seat. I'll off if you want to wait. A seat in the Premier Concourse. So somebody somebody else must have got your seat. I'll put it up on the computer. That ticket isn't coming up on me. So somebody must have told us. Jeanette. Do Dreadfully, dreadfully pissed off. It's like months and months of preparing it. and. We don't know why, and at the minute we're trying to react to something. But at the minute, it's just, it's obviously going wrong. Everything we've set up in place the last seven or eight months, whether the tickets got lost in the post, whether there's gremlins in the system, whatever. David, you've asked me this three times, and I said I can't tell you because it's still going on. Right? But it, it, yeah, it could well be a couple of thousand. It is no more than 6,000. It is no more than 6,000, because 6,000 were posted. We're trying our best, we're working as hard as possible. Internally, everything's worked, it's been fine. And there's this glitch, and we haven't got a clue why. We did, we're firefighting, that's the last, the last thing we wanted to do. Um, I'll see if there's anybody around. Yeah. If we could, if we could say, oh, right, this, uh, now we see what's gone wrong, this. This, this is nothing. People, people won't believe that, quite rightly. People won't believe it to say, oh, the, club, the club's got it wrong. We always said that this was a trial run. Ajax is the one, it's a great event, but it's when we've got to get a lot of the gremlins out. There will not, from a ticketing side, there'll not be another, another Ajax, but from the point of view of other aspects of it, whether it's the security and everything else, you know, it's a good trial run. As the ticket queues continued to grow, and with less than 24 hours to kick off, there was doubt about whether or not the game would go ahead. The men from the council were unhappy with what they'd seen. I deal with facts. The facts of the matter are we haven't got a safety certificate as I stand here. When I get a safety certificate, then I can say the game will go ahead. Yeah? I stick to facts. So when do you, get... you ask me a question, I'm talking to you. When... If someone walked through that door, my only attitude is, we kick off tomorrow, there's no other option. I can't believe what chaos there is out there, though, today. It's well, just incredible. It's, it's a matter of, uh, you see chaos, I see progress. Yeah? You see problems, I see solutions. <laughs> An emergency meeting was called at the City Hall to assess the problem. I've got great confidence in the progress that's been made because of what I've seen in three days. 
I'm sure and Mr Fitton will come in perhaps if you ask him. From myself or Dave Nicholson's point of view, stadium manager, safety officer, <coughs> we would not contemplate running anything which is against our safety policy for spectators at all. We've identified the areas of concern and we, we now know exactly what's got to be achieved and we have given the safety committee the assurances that those items will, will, will be achieved by, by midday tomorrow. But what if they're not? Well, they've got to be, haven't they? With just over 12 hours to go, there was still one more thing to do. Announce the name of Sunderland Football Club's new home. On the stroke of midnight, Bob and John called a press conference. The name has evolved over a period of time, and it's a result of ideas and inspirations from a wide range of sources. Not any single individual. The name of the stadium is a milestone in the history of Sunderland, an event which only takes place once every hundred years. The Sunderland Stadium reflects the desire of the club and its supporters to be in the limelight, and like a torch signifies and illuminates the way forward. The name, like the stadium, will radiate like a beacon to the football world. Sunderland FC proudly announced at midnight the name of their magnificent new stadium, and that is the Sunderland Stadium of Light. Thank you. Can we just toast everybody, Sunderland Stadium of Light? Cheers. Outside, the new name didn't get such a brilliant reception. I, be I believe you've heard the name, but you, you just want to hear it from the horse's like mouth. It, John. I'm I the horse well, well the just, 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 just let me, just give me two minutes, right? Why should Well, I would appreciate if you did, okay? I'll listen to you if you just listen to me. Two minutes, right? Well, obviously, it's, it's a very emotional situation that everyone's got their own views as to what they would like to name the stadium and what they wouldn't like to name the stadium. We've so thought about it for a long, long time. We are my right? disgrace. We've, we've thought about it for a long, long time. Again. We want a name that will take this club and, and recognise this stadium, not only nationally, but internationally, right? Somebody else's name. And we've taken, we've taken the views of a lot of people, and at the end of the day, the intention is to flood the stadium inside and out every night during the hours of darkness, and that's why the name Sunderland Stadium of Light has been chosen. How many people voted on that? That's it. How many people voted on that? It wasn't a case of voting. Well, that's what we have decided. <laughs> At 12 o'clock on the opening day, the safety committee returned to the stadium to give their final decision. subcommittee considered the safety of the ground yesterday, they would generally uh, satisfy subject to completion of a number of outstanding items. I'm fully satisfied with the club <coughs> has now dealt with the outstanding items and that tonight's game can go ahead and I'm pleased to have the opportunity to wish the club very successful in their uh, stadium of light both tonight and in the future. Thank you. After a little over a year of building and preparation, 
the club had made it, but just in time. Seats were still being numbered as the crowds began to arrive. Come and get your programme. There's only 250 a programme. Game gets born, you can always read a programme. Mr. Stephen Newell. And the NEP group, Mr. Nigel Wilson. My lords, my lord bishop, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, would you please pray silence for the chairman of Sunderland Football Club, Mr. Bob Murray. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have the honour of welcoming you all tonight on behalf of the club and thank you for attending this historic occasion. Without a lot of people in this room, this would never have happened. As Bob was having his moment of glory with the great and good of Sunderland, in other parts of the ground, chaos reigned. To add to the computer problems, a whole row of seats had been numbered incorrectly, which meant that nearly 2,000 people couldn't find where to sit. As you say, number on the back, 46. Look on the side. The person's just numbered the seats wrong, that's all. So it's just a cock up, basically. But you're offering them other seats, but they won't sit in them. <laughs> If Bob Murray had any sense, he would actually turn around and get the heads and stuff in to one thing and get it all sorted out because it is a damn disgrace. They just don't know where they're going, they kind of throw nothing out, it's a damn disgrace. So if you haven't got a seat, remain standing and a steward well escorted to one. Quarter an hour before kick-off, they locked the doors. Double book seats. Double book seats. And they've delayed, I've just heard they've delayed the kick-off again because people, there's that many people sitting in the wrong seats. The spirit of blight. Not the spirit of light. Stadium of blight. That's all who play here. And those who support them. And those who manage the affairs of Sunderland Football Club. Through their desire for winning, may they see the greatest victory of all. And the goal, which is Christ, the saviour of the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you all this night and well into the future. Although there was a terrific party atmosphere, it was not the most dignified of opening nights. With the relationship between the supporters and the club at an all-time low, it remained to be seen whether the new stadium would do anything to heal the bitter wounds of relegation. I am not buying a season ticket. I just feel as though we've been, I've been, not just me, all the fans have been kicked in the teeth again. Absolutely. Why should I buy a season? Why should I put my money in front? I can, go, I can go and just, if I don't want to go, I don't have to go. If I want to go and pick a game, I can go and pick a game. There's plenty of seats to choose from. A true Sunderland supporter is not going to desert their team. I reckon when it comes down to it, that the fans are saying, oh no, we're not going to buy season tickets. But can they cope without coming to watch their team every Saturday? Late November 1997, this was the cold reality. A first division match at the Stadium of Light against Tranmere Rovers. After a poor start to the season, Sunderland were now undefeated in eight games and were slowly beginning to move up the league. It's a four inch wheel on this one. It's a, it's a Dimplex marker and your one. The other one was getting worn out and rattling about a bit. So we've got this nice, it's a good one, this one, first class. 
We'll win hands down to dear. The lads has been really up for this match. We're eight undefeated, and I just feel that we're improving and, and we're getting there. There's a lot of young players here. We still need to improve, but I'm pleased at the moment. It's a tough league, and there's the Nuts Forest, the Middlesbrough, Sheffield United, you know, uh, Charlton are a good side. I mean, it's about ten sides you can do it, and I, I, I'd like to think we're in that category. How important is it to the, is it to the business to go back up? Well, in the long term, it's it, it's essential. I mean, we we based the whole the whole structure on 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 a Premier League on Premier League basis. I mean, if 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 we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have built a stadium of this size and, and of this quality. Um, you know, it, it's not a total disaster in the short term, but uh, clearly we've got to get back into the Premier League uh, as as soon as we can. As for the supporters. Well, they seem to have short memories. Since the beginning of the season, crowds had been steadily growing to gates of over 30,000 people. That's bigger than most Premier League clubs. Long gone were the jokes about white elephants. Bob Murray's Stadium of Light was a resounding success. I don't think any of us are over what happened at the end of last season. I think we've got it all to do yet and none of us will rest until we're back in the Premiership. Did it take you a long time to get over that? I'm not over it. There's only one place to be, and that's in the Premiership. So how's it been going back to kind of first division clubs? Well, there's super people. I mean, we're very pro football in general, and um, we always make people very hospitable here, and Sunderland's a very well-liked club throughout football, but it is difficult going to some of these uh, clubs. Uh, with the tremendous following that we have and, and everything. And, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it until we succeed. This year we're pulling up trees financially at the stadium. We've seen money we've never seen before. But uh, obviously the uplift that would have been there had we retained our stadiums would have been massive. But we have this to walk into next time that we go on the Premiership. We have the stage to play on and the facilities to take the income that's necessary to make sure that someone will never ever get relegated again. With their recent run of success, Sunderland were already being tipped for promotion straight back into the Premier League. Go and enjoy it. Go and enjoy it. A new season had brought new faces to the team. The arrival of Lee Clark from Newcastle and Kevin Phillips from Watford had produced a string of goals and brought a new confidence to the team.
straight. <laughs> yeah, they're in there. That makes it here, doesn't it? Brilliant. 4 0, I was one out. I was very satisfied. Very good. Smashing.